Welcome to the Brand Doctor Podcast, strategies that help entrepreneurs build reputable and profitable brands. Here's your host, Henry Kaminsky, Jr. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Henry Kaminsky here from UniqueDesigns.net with another Brand Doctor Podcast episode. And today we're going to be talking about tattooable brands. And if someone tattoos your logo on their body somehow, some way, whether it be with legitimate ink, a sticker, whatever it, the case may be, you know you've made it. So let me share with you a funny little story that happened not too long ago when my wife and I were out at one of the local restaurants that just opened up. So for some of you guys uh, that know me pretty well, I love cars. I've always loved cars. And um, I have a couple nice cars, one being a Maserati. Now, I like my Maserati for many, many different reasons. I love the interior. I love the way it drives. It's a very, very fun car to drive. The interior is just insane. You know, the leather is pristine. And I just love it. I don't know how else to explain it. But there's something subtle about when I'm driving my Maserati that you may not know. People actually treat me a little different. Let me give you a quick example. So a few weeks ago, my wife and I went to a very nice restaurant that just opened up not too far away. And you can only valet park with them. You cannot park your car um, by yourself. So we were leaving... And the guy in front of us was getting his car uh, ticket, you know, the valet ticket out of his pocket. Now, he was a couple people in front of us, right? So he gets the ticket, hands it over to the valet guy, right? Now, I waited my turn, went up to the valet guy, gave him my ticket, and, (coughs) excuse me. Gave him my ticket, and I was just, you know, waiting for him to get my truck or get my car. So it was interesting. So as we were waiting, I realized that my car came before the car, the guy's car in front of me. And I didn't think anything of it. I was like, you know what? I don't know. Maybe where where he parked my car was closer. I don't know. So I get in the car, and as I'm helping Tori into the car, now at the time she was nine months pregnant, so it took us a little time to, you know, get situated in the car, and maybe three, four minutes had passed at this point, right? And this guy's car, the guy that was ahead of me, two or three people, this guy's car finally comes, right? And I'm sitting to myself, and I'm going to myself, I wonder why. I wonder why. So as we were pulling out, I tested an idea and turned the wrong way and drove through the valet lot. And what I noticed, and you're all going to say the same thing. Oh, yeah, that is true. But what I noticed was that the valet lot had all the nicest cars parked closest to the restaurant. My car was there. A couple of Jags were there, Mercedes. There was a couple of Range Rovers in the parking lot. They were all in the front row. And there were spaces up front for more that were just simply reserved. And then the back of the lot was reserved for the average cars. Okay, and what I re- what I noticed was when I wrapped back around, the guys the guy that was ahead of me had a perfectly nice Honda Accord. It was brand new. You could tell because I could tell the body style. It was a newer body. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but that's where the average cars get placed. In the back of the restaurant. Now, this 
is in a bummy place. Even the average cars were pretty nice. But the reason this fellow's car took so long to get was that it was the farthest away. They weren't being rude to the guy. They just parked his average car farther away. So he had to wait longer while the valet went to get it. You see, simply because I'm associated with a Maserati, I get better service. Now, that's just one example. And this kind of stuff happens all the time. So you guys all know that's true. Cars, not expensive cars, but all cars have a status associated with them. High status or low status. Now, let's take it a step further. All brands have a status associated with them. So let me give you a second example here. Right? Lots of car dealerships out there have dealership stickers in the back of the car. It's almost like a little mini advertisement for the dealership where the car was purchased. Now, we're going to get subtle here, so, so pay attention. Okay? People almost universally hate these stickers in the back of the cars. Why? Because people don't want to be associated with the dealership. They want to be associated to the brand of the car. So for most people, they don't care to be driving around with the dealership advertisement in the back of their window. Even if they love the dealership. People want to be associated with the brand of their car. That's the bottom line. Now, why? What's wrong with giving a little promo to Ted's Auto Barn or West Point Audio Lexus Range Rover, whatever, right? Well, to be honest, screw those guys. That's why Ted and your R and your and your Auto Barn run a great business, but. Screw you, dude. I'm not getting paid to rep your brand on my ride. And that's what it comes down to. So let me give you another example. How many Apple, Apple, the brand Apple, Apple stickers do you have, have you seen on people's cars? I've seen it quite a few times. And how many Apple stickers do you see on windows, folders, notebooks, uh, any of those sort of things, right? You see them all over the place. Now compare that to how many Amazon stickers you see on stuff. Have you ever seen someone put an Amazon sticker on their car window? Of course not. No one does that. Or Walmart. Have you ever in your life seen somebody with a proud-to-be-a-Walmart shopper sticker on their rear window? Never. Now compare that to status. That's the point that I'm trying to make here, guys. Status and brands connect to people. Certain levels, certain ways. And if you can get to the level where you can have people representing your brand with authority, Right? And having that proud moment. That's the key. That's the key. Now let's take it one step further. How many Harley Davidson tattoos have you seen? Plenty, right? That's a common tattoo. So this creates a spectrum, right? At one end, we've got Walmart stickers. Nobody wants a Walmart sticker. Even Walmart employees don't want Walmart stickers. And at the other end, we have brands so strong that people actually tattoo them on their body. This is one of the core most concepts in branding. And if you get this idea, you're halfway there. So is your brand tattooable? I'm not, saying, I'm not saying people are going to go out and actually go and get a tattoo of your brand. But is your brand tattooable? Is your brand identity short, sharp, tight, meaningful? Does using your services carry some status 
Does your brand have a tribe or group associated with it that's desirable? Consider the case of the Apple stickers. People put them all over the place because of three things. They love the company and products, the products have status, and it makes them part of a group of mindful souls. I see it over and over and over again. People come to me and they have great products. They get the first step right. They never move past that. They think a great product makes a great brand. In part, that's true, but it's just one-third of the equation. What we do at Unique Designs is dial in the rest of the equation. And here's the basic equation. It's great products, respectable brand status, and a desirable group or brand tribe. That's the three main metrics you're going to be looking at here. There's more, of course, but if you get those three things right, you're going to have a solid foundation to work with. Now, I'm not saying you need to build the next Lexus or the next Apple. For the most, for most people, this isn't the direction that they're headed. But even if you run a Main Street paint supply store, the basic three rules apply. In fact, you're probably way more likely to see people wearing a t-shirt with a local paint store brand on it than you're going to see somebody wearing a I heart Walmart shirt. So this podcast is a little longer, guys, than usual, but some strong stuff here that I want you to get. Status is everything. Status is everything. So there you have it, guys. Another daily gem for you. Again, if you haven't subscribed to this podcast yet, please do. Please share it with friends and families and colleagues that could benefit from this information. And if you haven't yet uh, checked out the brand audit at UniqueDesigns.net, go and check that out right now. Uh, If you're looking to fast-track your way to getting a better brand, bolder brand, more impactful brand, and helping you connect with your ideal customers. So have an awesome day, guys, and I will check you on the next episode. You've been listening to the Brand Doctor Podcast with Henry Kaminsky, Jr. To get your appointment with the doctor, visit Brand Audit at www.uniquedesigns.net.